Greetings. Grace and peace be with you. I'm Paul Stevens. I'm the ordained minister in placement at St Luke's Uniting Church in Highton. A special welcome to members of the Belmont congregation who are sharing with us again this week and who are participating in the leadership of this service. And a particular welcome to you if this is the first time you've watched one of these videos. We do value feedback from those of you who watch the videos and contact details can be found via the St Luke's Uniting Church website so please take up that opportunity. This week we're continuing our exploration of the themes of a book written by Anglican theologian Tom Wright, God and the Pandemic, a Christian reflection on the coronavirus and its aftermath. This book touches on the big question of God and suffering. And this week, we are focusing on the Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures, and how these ancient writings help us to travel through difficult times today. Let us enter into a time of prayer. Let us pause in silence for a few moments to allow time to let go of all those things that are swirling around in our minds and to become aware that we are in the presence of the Holy One, the God who comes to us in the person of Jesus Christ. Creator God, we praise you for your presence with us always. We praise you that in dark and difficult times, even in times of unknowing when we feel abandoned and wonder about your presence, even when the veil of death is near, you draw close to us to offer hope and comfort and healing. Through your Spirit's prompting, may we be open to your voice. Free us, God of mercy, from all that keeps us from you. Deal with the brokenness in our lives. Enable us to confess our sin and to embrace the forgiveness you so freely offer through Christ. Faithful Lord, whose steadfast love never ceases and whose mercies never come to an end, Grant us the grace to trust in you and to receive the gifts of your love, new every morning, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Last week we looked at the opening section of Tom Wright's book and considered the ways we in our everyday lives make sense of the reality of suffering and evil, or at least try to make sense of the reality of suffering and evil. Ways that often reflect the thinking of ancient philosophers like the Stoics, the Epicureans and the followers of Plato. Tom Wright argues, rather than trying to come up with an answer to why bad things are happening, the key Christian response is to focus on how we respond to the reality of suffering and evil, how we respond to the impact of COVID-19. Although I might add, that I think there's a lot to be said for struggling intellectually with the big questions. Let's listen now to two passages from the Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures. The first is from the book of Lamentations. Some of you may remember I've reflected on this passage and book at length in an earlier video. The writer of this book, which is actually a series of mournful poems, pulls no punches 
in describing the people struggling to live in the devastated Jerusalem, with their leaders either dead or in exile in faraway Babylon, which is in modern Iraq. The second reading is from the book of Job, that amazing piece of wisdom literature, most of which revolves around a terse conversation between Job and three so-called friends about why bad things have happened to him. Surely he has sinned that his family, his livelihood and his health have all been taken from him. The passage from Job that Lynn will read for us is the beginning of a section of the book in which God speaks to Job and reminds Job that maybe he does not have all the answers. Reading from Lamentations 3, verses 19 to 24, in the New Living Translation. The thought of my suffering and homelessness is bitter beyond words. I will never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss. Yet, I still dare to hope when I remember this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. Reading from Job 38, verses 1 to 4, 12 to 13, and 16 to 18, in the New Living Translation. Then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind. Who is this that questions my wisdom? with such ignorant words. Brace yourself like a man, because I have some questions for you, and you must answer them. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you know so much. Have you ever commanded the morning to appear and caused the dawn to rise in the east? Have you made daylight? spread to the ends of the earth to bring an end to the night's wickedness. Have you explored the springs from which the seas come? Have you explored their depths? Do you know where the gates of death are located? Have you seen the gates of utter gloom? Do you realise the extent of the earth? Tell me about it if you know. The Old Testament is filled with many examples of the people of Israel grappling with difficult situations. But the devastation of Jerusalem and the exile of so many people to Babylon in the year 586 BC must have seemed to them to have been the ultimate tragedy. The Book of Lamentations is a deep cry of grief in the face of this disaster. It is an outpouring before God of the reality of the pain and the suffering. Could you not hear the pain in the words that Lynn read for us a few months ago when she read that passage from Lamentations? The thought of my suffering and homelessness is bitter beyond words. I will never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss. Tom Wright in his book quotes a few verses from the very end of Lamentations, actually the last few verses of the whole book, and they're even more pain-filled. Let, let me read a few of them. But Lord, you remain the same forever. Your throne continues from generation to generation. Why do you continue to forget us? Why have you abandoned us for so long? Restore us, O Lord, and bring us back to you again. The book of Job is an amazing book. Job's three so-called friends try to make sense of it all, 
claiming that he, Job, must have done something terribly wrong for such horrible things to have happened to him. Of course, we the readers know that Job is innocent. Job himself in prayer grapples with God, questioning God as to how God can be a just God given all that has happened to him, to Job. Tom Wright suggests that the book of Job has an unresolved character. Unlike so many detective shows, everything isn't neatly sorted out at the end. Although God does declare that Job has told the truth. He has, and I quote Tom Wright here, clung on to the fact that God is just, even though his misery, that's Job's misery, seems to deny it. The teaching of these Old Testament texts, which is underlined by Tom Wright, is that when bad things happen to us, when we suffer from a plague or fire or famine, when gross injustices take place, when the pall of death comes close, unlike the Stoic approach, which is to grit your teeth and carry on, there is a place for lament, for honest grief, for grappling with God. And didn't Jesus do just that from the cross when he echoed the words of Psalm 22 and said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The wisdom of today's uh, scripture passages is the suggestion that pain and justice can't simply be explained away and that an, an appropriate response to awful circumstances is to be honest about the reality, to be honest with yourself, honest with others and honest with God. Remember, God can cope. As those words from Lamentation say, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. It's interesting, brothers and sisters, that this ancient wisdom, to be honest, to pour out our inner feelings when we're in difficult times, equates pretty well with modern understandings of the grief process. Please share with me in prayers of intercession. Today is the feast of St. Francis of Assisi, 1181 to 1226. I'll finish with a well-known prayer attributed to him. Compassionate God, you called the universe into being, yet you know each one of us by name. Even when we've wandered far from you, or life seems to be out of control, you remain close. Your love is steadfast. We praise you that you hear our cries and that you know our concerns before we can even form the thoughts to express them. We pray for our planet Earth, blessed with a myriad of people and cultures. Especially we pray for those people and places afflicted by COVID-19, environmental devastation, war, oppressive governments, poverty, hunger, poor medical resources, or a combination of one or more of these. We pray for the church across the world as it seeks to remain faithful to Christ by living out his way of faith, hope, and love. We pray for our country and our local community here in Geelong, particularly as COVID-19 caused restrictions are eased. We uphold in prayer those who are known to us whose concerns, griefs, and hurts we share and bear. Lord, make us an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Divine Master, grant that we may not seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. In the name of Christ, amen. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, 
the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Friends, as you go into this week, perhaps the takeaway from our service today is to be honest and share what's on your heart in an appropriate and safe way. But also hear words from Scripture, uh, taken from various places in Scripture, which encourage us to walk the way of Jesus. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, rest and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen.